The History and Future of the Internet, from ARPANET to Web 4.0. Today, we're embarking on an epic journey, one that traces the evolution of the Internet. From its humble beginnings as ARPANET, a military experiment, to its transformation into the World Wide Web, the rise of social media, and the looming future of Web 4.0, we'll take a look at how this invisible force shaped our world and how it will continue to do so. Curious about the internet's wild journey and what lies ahead? Then let's dive in. But first, welcome back, curious minds, to another exploration with the stuffed capsicum, where we dive deep into the history and future of the world's most transformative technologies. Our story begins in the late 1960s, at a time when the world was divided into two opposing camps, the United States and the Soviet Union. It was the Cold War, an era of extreme tension, secrecy, and rapid technological advancement. Both superpowers were locked in an arms race, not just militarily, but scientifically. And amid this high-stakes rivalry, something revolutionary was brewing, ARPANET. Created by the United States Department of Defense's Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, ARPANET was designed as a communication system that could survive even a nuclear attack. The idea was to decentralize communications, allowing information to flow freely, even if parts of the network were destroyed. This led to the concept of packet switching, where information would be broken down into smaller packets that could take multiple paths to their destination, ensuring that the message could still arrive even if one route was blocked. The brilliance of packet switching allowed ARPANET to be more resilient and adaptable than any communication system before it. On October 29, 1969, history was made when the first message was sent between two ARPANET nodes, one at UCLA and the other at Stanford Research Institute. The message was simple, Logan. But only the letters L and O were transmitted before the system crashed. While this may seem like a small step, it was a giant leap for digital communication. From that moment, ARPANET became the seed of something far bigger than anyone could have imagined. But ARPANET wasn't meant to remain a government secret forever. Soon, it expanded from military use to connecting academic institutions, research centers, and universities. By the 1970s, ARPANET had become a powerful tool for collaboration and knowledge sharing between scientists across the country. It was in these academic circles that the internet, as we know it, began to take shape. As more and more institutions connected to ARPANET, it became clear that a common language was needed for these different networks to communicate effectively. The solution came in the form of a revolutionary new protocol, TCP-IP. Developed by Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn in the late 1970s, TCP-IP, Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol, provided a standardized way for different networks to communicate. This protocol was the key to scaling ARPANET into a truly global network of networks. With TCP IP, each computer could send and receive information regardless of the specific hardware or software it was running. It was a universal translator for digital communication. In 1983, ARPANET officially switched over to TCP IP and this is the moment when the internet as we know it was born. No longer a network limited to a few universities and government agencies, the internet was now an open, expandable network that could connect people across the globe. As TCP IP spread, the number of connected networks grew exponentially. What began as a military tool had now become a backbone for scientific research, education, and communication. But something was still missing an easier way for people to navigate this vast network of information. And that's when Tim Berners-Lee stepped in with a vision that would change everything. By the late 1980s, the internet was a powerful tool for those who knew how to use it. But for the average person, it was still inaccessible and confusing. There were no websites, no search engines, no user-friendly interfaces. Enter Tim Berners-Lee, a British computer scientist working at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Berners-Lee envisioned a way to link documents using hypertext, creating a web of information that could be easily navigated. In 1990, Berners-Lee developed the first web browser, and with it, the first website was born. 
The World Wide Web was a system of linked documents that could be accessed via the Internet. This invention transformed the Internet from a tool for experts into something that anyone could use. Now, with just a few clicks, you could explore a vast world of information. The web grew rapidly throughout the 1990s. Websites like Yahoo and Amazon were launched, and search engines emerged to help people find information more easily. The dot-com boom had begun, and businesses were quick to realize the potential of this new digital frontier. The World Wide Web wasn't just about sharing information anymore. It became a platform for commerce, entertainment, and social interaction. As companies like Google and eBay rose to prominence, the web rapidly integrated itself into everyday life. By the end of the 1990s, the internet was no longer a curiosity. It was a necessity. As we entered the 2000s, the internet underwent yet another transformation. No longer was it just a tool for consuming content. It became a platform for creating and sharing. This shift marked the beginning of Web 2.0, an era defined by user-generated content and social interaction. The internet had evolved into a two-way street where users were no longer passive consumers. They were creators, collaborators, and influencers. Web 2.0 was characterized by the rise of social media platforms like MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as video sharing sites like YouTube. These platforms gave everyone a voice. For the first time in history, Anyone with an internet connection could share their thoughts, videos, and experiences with a global audience. Suddenly, the power to influence and shape the conversation wasn't in the hands of a few media corporations. It was in the hands of the people. This democratization of content brought the world closer together, allowing people to connect with others across the globe. But it also brought new challenges. With so much content being produced at an unprecedented rate, Issues like misinformation, online harassment, and data privacy emerged as critical concerns. While Web 2.0 revolutionized communication and community building, it also raised questions about the ethics of data collection and how much control tech giants like Facebook, Google, and Twitter should have over public discourse. As the internet became more integrated into our daily lives, the consequences of its growth became harder to ignore. At the same time that Web 2.0 was redefining how we interact online, another revolution was taking place, the rise of mobile technology. In 2007, Apple launched the iPhone, a device that would forever change how we access the internet. Suddenly, the web wasn't something you needed to sit down at a computer to use. It was something you could carry in your pocket. The mobile internet exploded in popularity, with millions of people using their smartphones to browse the web, check emails, and interact on social media. Mobile apps transformed entire industries, from transportation to shopping to entertainment. Platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp, and Snapchat grew in popularity, giving rise to a whole new generation of digital natives who had never known a world without the mobile internet. The mobile revolution made the internet even more ubiquitous, but it also brought new challenges. With the internet available at all times, the line between online and offline began to blur. People were always connected, leading to concerns about screen time, mental health, and the impact of social media on our sense of well-being. As the mobile internet became an everyday reality, the internet itself was undergoing another transformation, one driven by a desire for more privacy, security, and user control. Enter Web 3.0. This new era of the web is defined by decentralization, with blockchain technology and peer-to-peer -peer networks at its core. Blockchain, the technology behind cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, offers a way to create decentralized applications, or dApps, that don't rely on a central authority. With Web 3.0, the power to control data and assets shifts from corporations to individuals. Imagine a future where social media platforms are owned and governed by their users, or where artists can sell their work directly to fans without needing a middleman. While Web 3.0 is still in its early days, its potential to reshape the internet is immense. 
With decentralized finance, DeFi, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, we are starting to see a glimpse of what a more equitable and user-centric internet could look like. But as with every innovation, Web 3.0 brings its own challenges, including regulatory concerns and the potential for misuse. So what's next for the internet? Many believe that we are on the cusp of a new era, Web 4.0, an internet powered by artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and the Internet of Things, IoT. In this future, the Internet won't just connect our devices, it will seamlessly integrate with our physical world. In the world of Web 4.0, AI will be everywhere. From personalized virtual assistants that know your preferences to smart cities that optimize traffic and energy use in real time, the Internet will become more intelligent and more integrated into our lives than ever before. Imagine walking through a city where augmented reality overlays provide real-time information about your surroundings, or where AI assistants help you make everyday decisions based on your habits and preferences. Web 4.0 also promises to enhance the Internet of Things, connecting billions of devices, from refrigerators to healthcare systems, creating a world where everything is interconnected. But with this new level of connectivity comes the need for robust security and ethical guidelines. As the internet becomes more intelligent, how do we ensure that privacy and human rights are protected? As we move towards a future where the internet is more integrated into our lives than ever before, it's important to consider the challenges that lie ahead. From privacy concerns to the ethical implications of AI, the future of the internet is not without its risks. One of the biggest challenges we face is ensuring that the benefits of the internet are available to everyone. Despite the rapid growth of the web, there are still billions of people who lack access to basic internet services. As we look towards Web 4.0, it's crucial to bridge this digital divide and ensure that the internet serves as a tool for empowerment rather than exclusion. The internet has come a long way since its origins as a military experiment in the 1960s. It has transformed how we communicate, how we do business, and how we connect with the world. But as we stand on the brink of Web 4.0, it's important to remember that the internet is more than just technology. It's a reflection of our collective humanity. The choices we make today will shape the future of the web and, in turn, the future of society. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the history and future of the internet. And that brings us to the end of another captivating journey with the stuffed capsicum. Thank you so much for joining us today and being a part of our global community of knowledge seekers. Remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of our exciting videos filled with fascinating facts, surprising discoveries, and a touch of AI magic. Stay stuffed with knowledge by exploring our diverse playlists and be sure to share your favorite videos with friends and family. We appreciate your support and can't wait to continue serving up a delectable mix of educational and entertaining content. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and keep those stuffed capsicums of wonder rolling.